Welcome. In this example, what I want to do is talk about some uh, misconceptions that students come with on transformations of functions. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to provide you with some false statements and then provide some counterexamples that show that statement is going to be false. It's going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to getting started right now. So the first example here uh, is basically the only transformation that can affect the domain of a function is a horizontal shift. And that's pretty common. You know, when we're looking at a function is like restricted on its domain, like the square root function. Um, obviously, if we were to shift this graph left or right, the domain is going to be shifting, you know, left and right, right? Because right now the domain is only positive numbers. But it's important to know that if I had f of x equals the negative square root of x, well, that is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. So now the domain is changing from all negative numbers. So the important thing to understand here is when the domain is um, restricted here, when you have a reflection about the y-axis, that is also going to impact the domain. So it's very important to kind of remember that because a lot of students just get with the, oh, shift is the only thing. Reflections are going to affect the domain as well. Reflections about the y-axis, I should clarify. Uh, all right, so on to the next one. The next one says, all functions that contain a vertical shift and reflection about the x-axis must have a change in the range. So again, this kind of comes into that exact same idea here. This function here is, you know, square root of x. If I am going to, now instead of reflecting about the y-axis, if I reflect this function about the x-axis, or if I shift it up or down, I'm going to have a new range. And this statement works for this function, but you know, I say all functions. So let's look at a different function. Let's look at the cubic function. And we see the cubic function is defined for all real numbers, for the domain as well as the range. So it doesn't matter what shifts I do up or down, shifts left or right, reflections, you know, about the x or the y-axis, the domain and range is always going to be all real numbers, all real numbers. So therefore, that is a counterexample from this. This statement works um, only for functions that are, have, a dom have a range, I'm sorry, that is restricted. So if we have an unrestricted range, it doesn't matter what I do vertically um, as a shift or as a reflection. The next one says, if a function has a horizontal stretch of B and a vertical asymptote at x equals C, then the new vertical asymptotes will be at x equals b times c. So basically it's, you know, when we apply some kind of, you know, stretch or compression, that's going to be affecting our asymptotes. So let's look at a function that has a stretch or compression. Let's look at, mm, I don't know, 1 over x minus 2. Okay, so if we look at this, we know that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. All right, now let's go ahead and apply a horizontal stretch of B. So remember, if it's a horizontal stretch of B, that's going to be um, basically the same as like multiplying by a fraction. So let's say, let's have B equals one third. So therefore, my new function with a horizontal stretch would be one over one third times X minus two. And so what it's saying is that my new vertical asymptote then needs to be what my vertical stretch is times where my at vertical asymptote was previously, which is, oops, sorry, that's one-third, isn't it? Of course, one-third times two. And we can see that that is incorrect, right? Because if you look at this function with this vertical stretch, the undefined values here is still going to be at two. So my vertical asymptote is still at two. So the important thing here is the stretching and compression is not going to be shifting the graph left or right or up or down. So if you have vertical or horizontal asymptotes, they are not going to change based on a stretch or a compression. The stretch or compression is not going to be impacting the domain in the range at all. That is only for the oper that is only for the transformations of um, reflecting and shifts. All right, next one. Uh, when applying transformation to a graph, the order does not matter. And this one will you know, get a lot of students, and the basic thing that we want to look at when we're dealing with the function is following the order of operations. So the function that I kind of chose is f of x equals you know, negative x squared plus 1. And what we got to understand here is this graph is being reflected. So let's look at the parent graph. So the parent graph is x squared. Right, And I know that this graph needs to be shifted up one and reflected, right? So if you kind of follow this rule here, if you reflect it first, so you reflect it down, right? And then you shift it up one. So now the graph looks like this. Well, yeah. 
So now you can see, that's a horrible parabola, but that's okay. So you can see you first reflect it, and then you shift it up one, and that is going to be our correct answer. However, some students will kind of just kind of like follow the operations here, and they'll say, all right, well, let me go and take my parabola, and then let me go ahead and shift it up one first, and then reflect it about the x-axis. So then the graph looks something like this, which is wrong. So the important thing is to understand, one, what the transformations um, are giving you. You know, you don't even need to follow order of operations. You can just, you know, know that this needs to be facing down and it needs to be shifted up one. So that is going to be your correct parabola. However, sometimes if you're doing one transformation at a time, just make sure you follow the order of operations. You're going to apply multiplication and division, you know, before you're doing your addition and your subtraction. So these are some basic kind of misconceptions that I came up uh, with my students before class. What I would uh, love to kind of hear from you is, you know, what are some good false statements that maybe um, you can think of that uh, you think would be a good challenge for anybody, um, you know, learning about transformations of functions or, you know, maybe some ones that you've kind of seen before. I'd love to kind of read through them and see what you guys come up with. Till the next video. Cheers.